Hello, I'm Mr. Evans, and I work as a teacher down at the south tip of Texas, and I want to create a series of short videos showing you how to create your own videos using a program online called Screencast-O-Matic. It's completely free as long as your videos are up to 15 minutes, which is mostly all you need. And if you want to stream more videos together, which what I'm going to do, you can create a playlist on YouTube. So if you're watching this video, you can go to my channel and find the complete playlist. If not, I probably emailed you this list or sent it to you in some way. But if you find it on the web, you can go to my channel and find the full length playlist. So I want to show you how you can build your own videos for students to watch and it's quite simple but let me tell you why I'm really think that recording videos for your students is a very powerful method uh, I've been teaching for 12 years and I've been teaching five years as a uh, math teacher and then I've been teaching seven years as an engineering teacher teaching a class called Intro to Engineering Design. And it has a whole mixture of things from drawing by hand to doing mathematics to doing research to designing ideas and drafting and a drawing on a computer with a CAD program, which stands for Computer Aided Design. And then we also have group assignments and group projects that they uh, make stuff together. So it's, it's a mix of a lot of different things to get their interest into engineering and design methods. Uh, it's just an introduction course, but it covers a lot. Uh, let me show you why I think um, recording videos is very powerful. When I was in college, I worked for a professor, uh, Dr. Crown. That's his picture right there. Uh, he had a website for his students. He would take all of his classes that he would teach and he put all his information here, but he also had a class that he would teach for high school students and junior high students over the summer, like little camps. And he would take them into this virtual world and at the time was pretty cool. Uh, now the graphics look totally different because that's the way computers are, right? And they would walk around this virtual world as a little video game avatar. And then they would uh, come across a uh, different individuals in the Roman camp and they would instruct them how to make a catapult uh, using um, CAD software, computer-aided design. So they would make all these little pieces and then build it together. So he wanted to do a little kind of like experiment. He had four groups of students, um, like four periods, morning to afternoon, for a week. And he was going to uh, teach them how to make some beams and wheels and axles and a uh, little frame and assemble it together to make a uh, catapult. So the first period, he taught them lecture style. So we had about 30 or 40 students in a computer lab. He sat at the front, projector, displaying his computer screen, and he's telling them, I'm clicking on this, I'm typing this, showing them what he's doing step by step by step by step. What's really hard about teaching a computer program step by step by step by step is if a student misses step three, they can't really go on to step four, five, six, seven. So they, they get lost a lot. If a student has to go to the bathroom, forget it, they've, they've missed everything. Um, so it's really hard to teach a computer program step by step by step by step because you're going to be very much every time correcting and helping if a student turns their head or someone asks them something and they, and they look at them or, you know, they get distracted they're gonna miss steps and be lost. Um, and so we were answering a lot of questions. I was running around the lab, he was answering a lot of questions. He was stopping his lecture often to help the students um, wherever they got stuck. Then we had a, another class uh, right after that. And instead of teaching him lecture style, um, he had me write out all of his lessons in step-by-step -step format. And I would insert pictures of the um, buttons they had to click on and give various different screenshots so that the students could follow this tutorial. It ended up being about 40 some pages, uh, this tutorial on paper. The third group, we let them go into the virtual world and watch the videos. And they put their headphones on and they would watch the videos and they would make the product. 
The fourth group, we gave them the option of, do you want the videos from the virtual world or do you want the, um, the written out tutorial? And I think um, in that group of, uh, you know, probably 35 students, I think only two of them chose to just keep reading through the written word. Almost all of them went for wanting to do the video. And this was back in uh, probably 2004, 2005, somewhere around that time. So it, it's been a while now, quite a while now. And what we did find is that the students that we taught lecture style, we were working hard. We were running around the classroom, answering questions, constantly stopping the lecture to help students catch up, uh, to answer a lot of questions. And we were answering a lot of the same questions over and over and over again. Uh, with the group with the written tutorial, we were also moving around answering questions, but it was less. And the groups that had the videos was a massive difference. We were not working nearly as hard because we already did all the work ahead of time. So they would just watch the videos and work on them. And then we would answer some questions that came to us. But most of, most of the time, we weren't asked a lot of questions. And what we did find is that the group that was being taught lecture style was very dependent on us and they did not have confidence in the program. They did not have confidence in themselves. Um, and their confidence was really built into our knowledge. So they only trusted us, they didn't trust themselves. And the groups that had the videos, well, we found that they tend to have more confidence. They tend to get the work a lot done a lot faster there were more students prone in that group to be confident and to go further and start learning the program on their own. So the videos made a massive difference. Uh, when I started teaching Intro to Engineering Design, the first year I didn't use any videos and I just taught students lecture style on how to use the CAD program. I worked hard, I was redoing a lot of stuff. Students were lost all the time. Students were confused all the time and I would print out papers for them that kind of had some instructions for them to also follow. But then I was also teaching it to them. So they had a lecture and kind of a written thing. The, the written tutorial wasn't as detailed as it needed to be, but it was there. And um, students were confused a lot. I was starting over often. If a student was absent, they, they were really lost trying to follow just the tutorial that was written down. So the next year I decided, why am I beating myself up? I already know that the videos work well. So I went straight forward into doing recorded lessons and the difference was overwhelming. I was much more relaxed. I did not have to run around my classroom restarting my lessons. If a student was absent, I just said, go watch the video. You haven't missed anything. It's all recorded for you. If a student you know, went to the bathroom, it's okay. They could pause the video. If they got confused at what I said, they could rewind the video. It was extremely powerful. It made my job a lot easier. And what it did is it freed me up to not be answering the same question over and over and over and over again all day, but rather help students when they had really big problems like a computer crashed or there was a glitch or they, was just, they were just completely lost. But most of the students can then now run through this self-paced program and learn more. And what I find is I, I could actually increase their knowledge because now they can do it much faster on a video than lecture style because they're controlling the speed of the lecture that then I can give them more information and teach them more things. So you can jump onto the next one where I'm going to tell you where I've used videos in my classroom to help me and to better my students.